Yeah, he's trying to make a switch to uh, safety. Ah. You got the quicks for it? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. He's a down in the box guy. It, 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 <laughs> not really, because, you know, the, the size the kids are bigger. I mean, he's he's going to be a big safety, Um, you know, weight-wise. Yeah. He run about a 4'7". He ain't fucking slow, but need them hips. Got to yeah. work on them hips a bit. Yeah. So he got a lot oh. of work in that shit today. It's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Got to flip him, huh? That's right. Got but a couple picks in the competition section, which is basically oh, like yeah. a seven on seven. Okay. Probably not even seven on seven. Probably, I don't know what it was, probably like probably five or six on six or something like that. I don't know. Skeleton drills. Oh. Good deal. Jeff, how you doing? I'm about to fire it up. up. Yeah, I'm fired up. Yeah. What are you fired up about? <laughs> We're going to bed. I saw Jeff today. Oh. <laughs> I'm ready to call yeah. it a night, Sean. If you were fired up earlier? No. <laughs> What's that? No. Joe's so being it, sarcastic. It was, it was a – so we're, we're celebrating my dad's uh, 75th coming up here on Wednesday, uh, but – Obviously, the weekends are a much easier time to get together. So um, we made the drive over to Orlando and um, had a little soiree there at Julie's house. Uh, Jeff was there. Yep. All the kids. Just not looking too good, I'll tell you. <clears throat> <laughs> well, thank, thanks, Joe. Thank you, if I may say, If I may say so. <laughs> It's funny, right before you got on, same thing you said about you. Yeah, I'm, I'm not surprised. I'm I'm functioning very slowly tonight, man. Let me tell you. I had, uh, what would you consider a handful of drinks? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you consider a handful of drinks, I had those. That's before I left. <laughs> I, 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 know, I know I heard that bottle rattle into the recycling bin before you left. I know that. Yeah. I was yeah. like all fucking weird, like, uh, what do you call it when you're dizzy? Uh, vertigo, man. I was all day yesterday. I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with me? Oh, that's bad. Yeah. I wasn't smoking any weed or nothing. I uh, see. That's that's where you fucked up, maybe. Uh, telling you, you balance get, out. Get right. Get the get right gang. <clears throat> yeah. So, uh, what do you guys think about this? Um, Spring ball. Anybody catching your eye? <laughs> I, I heard we got some receivers that look good. Uh, is this dude going to start like day one? <laughs> That's my question. That's my question I, to you two. Well, I'm I'm going to be hopping out of my car here in about – Two minutes you gotta, you, at the you, 280. You in Taco Ford, Bell? Guess, of my vehicle. You in the Taco Bell parking lot? No. <laughs> I need to gas up before the masses. I can make a quick getaway out of Ohio tomorrow. Yeah. You don't want to spend that money up there up north. That's for sure. Woody Hayes would be proud. Well, gas is cheap. Gas. I always wait until I get to Ohio. Gas is cheaper. We like to tax the shit out of that. Hmm. Up yonder. I paid fucking three fifty nine right here on the beach this morning. Not happy about that. Hmm. But uh, yeah, Jeff. Jeff's looking great. Um, <laughs> spry as a sprinkle. Um, uh, I'm just making up words at this point. Uh, I got to see uh, my sister. 
uh, dad, mom, all the kids. Uh, got to critique Armin's grilling, you know, skills. Yeah. Oh. Julie's <laughs> husband uh, needs some work. So. Uh, I tried to help. I tried to help. <laughs> you notice when I went over to help, when everything was done. <laughs> Right. strategically i have eaten but yeah so we got to talk about um uh, jeremiah smith should he be a starter week one <clears throat> i do want to i do have some other college general college football stuff we can get into later the main focus of tonight obviously is the offense the two deep you know, but but first and foremost, if you saw that freaking catch by Jeremiah Smith on Friday, you have to be pooping your pants. I'm big. I'm talking like big time poopies. <laughs> like uh, like you just had Taco Bell. Seven. A while. A while. You just had Taco Bell. You mean like hours or days? <laughs> In my pants. <laughs> at least hours at least hours all right good good i hope you guys right, hey, no, enough of the enough of the poop talk joe let's go come on the people just say dinner and stuff no more people let's go um i think that catch was on sunny styles too if i'm i was trying to catch the number it looked like it was sunny sure? covering it. i don't know was i couldn't a, tell was, i thought it was igb Oh, I mean, it was, it was a guy that it looked similar, similar in size. Um, uh, it just, yeah, might have been IGB, could have been. Um, I, I I couldn't tell what the number was, but there's some aggressive coverage, by the way. Yeah, I've, I've been arrested for less. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, and was it? You know, I it seemed like from the noise that uh, that was you know his foot. You know, he would have been inbounds. It would have been a legal catch. Um, that's like kind of like a, that's kind of like you drive into the hoop in basketball and getting hacked and you throw up the ball. Like, it's like an and one. That's like you get the 15 yards and the catch, you know, on pass interference. Sure. Yeah. Um, the, yeah. Super impressive. The progress. Yeah. Let's. Uh, oh, I got it right here. Actually, I can share it on screen. Let me share this quickly. Thank God there's no audio because I. Would definitely fuck that up. Boom. Catch. You guys all see that? That right foot is going down. Does he have control? Mm. I don't know. Then let me share that one. Here's another photo. Boom, left foot down this time. That looks like uh that looks like a fucking catch to me, Jeff. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, so I mean I think it and I think it's, it's what we're hearing and what we're seeing in these little clips, you know, we're not hearing about him doing and or not doing any of the other little things, you know. Um and we see these we see him flash with these in the scrimmage with those catches and catches like that. And I don't I don't hear any um Talk about you know this is an assignment here or um, you know is is lackadaisical on a route that on a ball or uh, on a play that wasn't going to him you know you don't hear any of the negative stuff either so uh, if he's flashing like this and he's not getting you know getting dinged or, or critiqued for any of the, the little things um, that, you know they would just drive a coach nuts not blocking properly mm -hmm. or being lazy you know yeah I mean I think it's like what well, it's probably like how we thought it would lay out. Depending on their formation, if you know, if, if if the certain personnel grouping is what they went on the first on the first play of the first game, they could be a starter. It might not come in until the third play of the game in that personnel grouping, but he's probably one of the first three receivers, I would think. Yeah, you know, depending on like you know, if it's mm -hmm. Mecca's in the slot, or you know, we talked about Ennis or where Mecca's at in the field, probably might dictate that. But yeah, it sounds like he's going to be one of those first three or four, depending on. The, whatever grouping they're in. Right. Who's that? 
That's the that's the TV at the gas station after you start pumping gas. I left my car on. I think that's illegal. First of all, I didn't want to cancel my call. Well, yeah, that's the pump screaming at me. Oh, I love those. That's my favorite. When it takes you five minutes to run your card and get through all the questions. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. then, then you want to sign up for this? Do you want our rewards? Do, do you want the shit. car wash? You a loyalty yeah. number? Oh yeah. All the things. <laughs> you want some sucky sucky? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but not now. I just want to pump some Hold gas. On. I'm going out to get it now. Give me a moment. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yourself. No. <laughs> Let's catch up when you get back. So, I, Joe. I mean, it sounds like it sounds like yeah. He's probably. I don't, you don't hear about, I mean, now there's probably a lot of hype just because he's a freshman and all, and all this, but I, no, they're not talking about anybody else doing what he's doing. You know what I mean? Right. So, yeah, I mean, I, he's, and he seems nobody's, we, and another thing, we have not went or heard of any, anybody's, you know, injuries, any, any receivers getting, you know, dinged up or like having to sit for a practice or two. Um, everybody's been participating. So, if it all stays healthy, especially him, you know, I, I think he, yeah. we expect him to see him, you know, that first within that first series of the first game, I, yeah. I mean, yeah. we're we're for sure a Mecca, right? And we're and we're kind of, I think all think that Tate is going to be one of them, and then so who's going to be that third guy? Ennis, Ballard. No. I, I think Ballard might have gotten passed over. But just rumor, I mean, just rumors from what, you know, like the, the, the beat guys that are reading, that are, you know, seeing practice that uh, Ballard might be in that, might not be in that first five. Maybe that, maybe the six. I think it's seven. all, yeah, I think you're right there, Jeff. Uh, but I, I think the starting lineup is determined where Emeka lines up. Yes. I, is he the in the slot that. or do they move him outside? You know, because if he's outside, then you got Tate on the other outside position. Then you got Ennis at the slot in place of a mech. So uh, that takes away Jeremiah Smith at one of those outside spots. Yeah. I mean, we kind of laid that out, at, at, you know, earlier in the year, uh, in the winter. Uh, we kind of laid out that's how we thought it might play out. I am you know, guess, you know, imagining the, the progression of Ennis. Um, and in and, and America being healthy and stuff coming back, so mm -hmm. uh, it seems like it's coming to fruition the way we saw it, right? Uh, I just, yeah, I, I, I guess uh, America really calls the shots here, or or the coaches call the shots on where America lines up, you know. Um, that that's really the question you know he played outside uh, solely in high school he didn't play the slot until he came to Ohio State yeah so he's got you know that's his experience um so like they did with Marv last year they moved Marv from outside to the slot occasionally you know move guys around they want to get Marv with some good matchups in the middle and so I think you're going to see the the same with Omeka moving him outside, you know, and then that opens the door for Ennis. But again, that takes away another outside receiver spot where you have to assume Tate is is a starter every every week, right? Uh, I mean, I I just I don't yeah. know. I think I think you know the only guy that's played any football is Omeka. Uh, nobody else has played meaningful or a lot of snaps. I mean, maybe Tate's played some meaningful snaps, but uh, not not a ton. So I, I think it'll all depend, and, and hopefully they're all grasping it. It is just, uh, okay, who's, who's the best guy? But um, I just don't think if Jeremiah could grab a hold of this uh, offense and all the things that come with it. We obviously know he's a physical specimen, beast, but – you know, kind of like Sonny Styles and uh, C.J. Hicks. Does he know what the fuck he's doing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. 
you know, you see Joe like he's flashing with those with those plays, you know, catch like that, some of the big plays he had in, in the scrimmage. But is there is there three or four times of practice where they're blowing the whistle and they're screaming like, God damn it, you know, yeah, get back here, you need to be here, whatever, or you're not hearing about that from any of the people that but you know, a lot there's not a whole lot of witnessing of the media or the practices either. So um and coaches so obviously, aren't the won't, won't just come out and and slam guys that you know that aren't doing all that you know having their head in the game. Or and you're but, you're constantly um, recruiting. Yeah, that'll be interesting guys, to see, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, like they, they, the they guys definitely don't want to. Even if Jeremiah's not maybe not doing all the stuff. Yeah, yeah, they don't want to. They definitely don't want to get him mad or you know or get him, you know, uh, you know, get him pissed off where he thinks. Well, I'm just, you know, I'm gonna go somewhere else. Yeah, they definitely are gonna, which which sucks, you know, because it's like you know hard hard coaching versus, um, you know keeping keeping it friendly, you know keeping them you know keeping them friendly. That's a that's a tough spot that coaches are in nowadays in college football. Mm-hmm. Right. So, yeah, um, and every player is different. You know, you can't. Yes, some you, you can can't do treat what? them all yeah. the same. So, yeah, but I. I got a I got a tough time. I I think I'm kind of leaning towards a rotation of four, even if Jeremiah Smith isn't the s- starter at one of the outside spots, he's next man in, you know, and you know it's it's going to be hard to. I mean, we're we're not going to be able to tell anything at the spring game. I mean, I'm excited for the spring game just as much as everybody else because. This is where you get to see those young guys, you know, and you get to see those those uh, spring game heroes, you know. Hopefully they don't un- end up being zeros. But um, I think because it's, you know, he's just in when – we're, we're, when we're talking week one of the season, he's in the rotation, maybe fourth man, but I don't know if he can start him. Don't know if you can do that. Everything depends on formation, of course. You know, just like yeah. starting running back, you know. <laughs> okay, it could be Quinchon, it could be Trey, it doesn't matter. Depends on the formation and the call. So, um, and, it you know, same as tight ends. It could be one tight end, it could be two tight ends. It could be three, who knows. But... I cannot go all the way there just on some social media videos to put Jeremiah Smith True. in the starting lineup. Sure. I want to. I really, really want to. But uh, I, I, I'm not – you know me. I'm not that active on the social medias. But uh, is anyone else getting any social media playtime? Like, you know, this time last year it was Marv. You know, getting all the hype, you'd have thought uh, Amaka would be getting that maybe this year, um, yeah. or or Tate with what he's flashed. Are any of these guys getting any love? Tate Martell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no, uh, no, no. I it. I haven't seen a, a ton of the other. We saw J, Jaden Ballard with the deep ball. The bobbling catch from uh, Devin Brown um, on, is like a just a straight bomb. Uh, great catch, great throw. Um, we've seen other people, but like Jeremiah Smith is making these wow catches, like the one over Denzel Burke in the scrimmage over a week ago, the Student Appreciation Day. You know, that was a big deal because it was on Denzel Burke. And then Caleb Downs was was uh, coming into the area, you know, late, but he was in the in the in the play too. Uh, then you had uh, what else? <clears throat> oh, Ryan Day said this after the scrimmage last weekend, last Saturday. He said, uh, "Quote: Jeremiah has really stepped in, got his black stripe off real quick. Don't forget." He got his black stripe off in four practices, two of them in pads. Remember, the first two were not in pads. They took spring break off, came back. Then 
his his second padded practice got a black stripe off. So continuing here, uh, Ryan Day said, "quote He's got a great approach. You know, I'm going to be careful what I say, but he's been certainly a pleasure to watch. We're all very excited about his future." He did go on yeah, to say later something about he's going to play a little football. That that can be taken in a few different ways. I, Give me three years of that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's, please. So yeah, uh, hey folks, as you're as you're coming in the door, please uh, don't forget to tip your waitresses. Drinks are free on the house at the bar over on the right. And uh, don't forget to hit the like button. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. And uh, we're going to get to you all your questions and comments. Kind of a quiet Sunday night. Um, this, uh, what, why is that? I don't know. Can't tell you. So um, as, you're, as you're coming in, we appreciate you. And get your questions in here. Whatever you want to talk about, we will get to tonight. Um, this is uh, going to be a offensive focus show and I'm, I'm offended already uh, but so we're going to talk too deep on the offense but we wanted to kick it off here with some Jeremiah Smith talk because of just the um, almost overwhelming amount of hype he's getting and uh, the Buckeyes are making it a clear um, what do you call it I guess I would say nurturing Pumping his tires, something like that. <laughs> Promoting of, of of the number one guy in the 2024 class. That's me keeping it clean. You should have known. So, yeah. Um, there's a reason. There, you got to remember, you know, see through the – between the between the lines there and and see uh, think about why they're promoting these videos and stuff. Yes, they're amazing catches. Yes, so but again, still practice in spring. So, sometimes... I think he's going to end up being our best guy. Okay, let's let's let uh, let's run amok. <laughs> best guy win in spring. Fall, no, all no, time. I, I, late, late fall, and could approach that all time. Could get in those same conversations right. with the greats in three years, especially if he's got a lot of playing time this year. Heaven forbid, avoids injury. Um, okay. Yeah, I just, I, I, I don't know who, who do we say is kind of like him. That we've had come come through the system, kind of Marvish. Marv's not quite as was never quite as big as a freshman, or you know, big Boston-ish. <laughs> kind of, yeah. I mean, uh, I would say I did I did a breakdown of of freshmen a while back on one of the shows, but yeah, I mean, I think the yardage. The all-time freshman yardage is like around 650 receiving. So um, that's the mark, you know, to, if you're looking at all-time greatness. I like his I like his chances. What are the odds on that? I'd throw on that. I think that's up for uh, betting. I'll take your money. You pay me money. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to do some research and see if I can pull the pull up those uh yardage things. But yeah, this uh the hype train is on fire, it's rolling downhill for Jeremiah Smith, and uh I'm on board. I just I don't know if I can make him a starter yet, man. After just some practice footage. Well, we're not seeing everything either, Joe. I mean, maybe the coaches are seeing plenty outside of what we do see, and they're like, "Yeah, we're we're putting out what we want everybody else to see, but we're seeing plenty enough." Um, just you know, 
maybe if he's if he's nailing all the assignments and he's just making more plays than others and he doesn't have any negatives, you know, no no missed assignments, no drops. Uh, then why couldn't he? I mean, if he's a, if he's one of the best, if he's if he's outperforming the other guy at, at that position, then start him. I don't give a fuck how old he is. You know what I mean? It's yeah. He might he might be just outplaying the other guys he's competing with, you know, for the playing time. So if so, here's you, bro. You we got three years, you know, three full years of Jeremiah Smith, and then leave as a junior. Take it. I mean, if he's if he's showing it, you know, don't just hold him back just because of his age. And I don't then I don't think coaches would. I mean, we're but we're just not seeing enough. We'll we'll, we'll see a little bit more in the spring game and just if, you know of him play after play. You know, we're not going to obviously mm-hmm. going to get a good, a good feel whether, oh he, oh, he came out with the first team. You know, they might not even have all those guys in the same squad. I don't know how they're going to do the, you know, we don't even know how they're going to break up the the game. But, you know, we'll, just, we'll hear more. We won't hear really have a better idea until, you know, mid through, you know, midway through camp, you know, yeah. fall camp. So, but if they just, if the hype keeps building and they're allowing the hype to just keep building, all the way through fall camp and we get into late August and it's, you know, a week or two out and we're waiting on the, we're waiting on the two deep, the first two deep to come out. Uh, yeah. I mean, if it's, if it hasn't stopped and it's continuing like it is now, then we got to expect him to be out there. Yeah. But anyways. Hey, but there are 105 or so other guys on the, on that team practicing. We talk about some of them too. Sure. Yeah, we can get into the <laughs> offense. <laughs> um, yeah, so we'll get to your comments and questions, guys. Appreciate everybody popping in. Um, but yeah, do you want to kick it off? Uh, well, I mean, where, where do you want to? Where, where do we want to go? We want to talk offense too deep. Um, yeah. I'm real interested. I, I mean, I, I know I know who the two are. I just I'm not sure which ones in what order. Uh, it seems like there's, we got a legit competition going on, right? Um, mm-hmm. From every anybody that's anybody that's been in the Woody and had any glimpse of that practice, any of the practices, they all say the same thing. This is going to be closer than people think it is. Um, us us as just fans that aren't in Columbus. I, we uh, we just go by what we hear, right? From people that are and the coaches, and n- nobody's nobody's giving it to any 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 one person fully. So um, Devin Brown seems like he's making strides. So it's going. I mean, him and Will Howard, you know, does Will would would, would Will Howard jump in the portal if he doesn't get the starting job at Ohio State? How about a weird, uh, you know, just a weird circumstance of things that happen that could happen. But well, let me I, let me. Uh... Since you brought it up real quick, let me chime in with my two cents. Sean okay. might want to chime in too. I don't think it's fair, and I disagree with assuming guys are going to bounce if they're not guaranteed the job right out of spring ball. Can, can so, he bounce? Are you are you allowed to? He's a grad. Bounce? He's a grad transfer, and the window opens on the sixteenth through May. It's like 15 days, so May 1st or 2nd, something like that is the next portal window. So right after the spring games, which, interestingly enough, the cheaters have almost tried to skirt. They Their spring game is a week after ours, so the spring portal window is already open by the time they have their spring game. But anyway, uh, that was a side note. Uh, but, yeah, yeah. Uh, Right after the game, guys can bounce. Basically, you're going to have that, you know. I just I didn't know what the rule was um, that you can bounce and then bounce again. I mean, he just got here three months ago. But he's so, a fifth year. You know, he's a grad transfer. So yeah, well, I know, there was, I know there was un- unlimited uh, bouncing on that. But honestly, but, I think the uh, didn't didn't a court just bounce the NCAA again on their rules as far as the transfer portal goes. I think there's no restrictions even for non Well, what did he do? What? What What did he do? No, no, no. Sean, 
No, the NCAA was as they don't have any. They have no way of enforcing multiple transfers. You, they yeah the it was ruled that that's illegal. So to 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 to, to limit someone. So yeah. So there is no rule as of right now. Um, unless there's like unless there's like some uh, some weird circumstance. But you're 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 you're, you're, you're free reign. It's it's free free roaming of multiple transfers, yeah. especially in a, in a grad in a, Joe, like you said, a graduate. Um, you, that's, you can, you've had that rule the whole time. Um, so yeah, there's, yes. there's no, there's no keeping Will Howard anywhere. He could, he could go, you know, in the, within the cycle or within the periods that they deem open and closed or whatever. Yeah. He could go. I, I, don't, I, I, don't, mean, I just don't, I don't see it though. I mean, I, I'd see it for a younger guy more than him. Cause what you just went through Ohio state's camp, learned the playbook and now it's spring and now you're going to come and, and install. I mean, if somebody was in dire need, a big time program, but I think he'd play his chances and be like, "Hey, I, I'm I'm going to go either compete for this spot, but I, wh- where else are you going to go that's a decent school and get a spot at that late uh, in the game?" Right. It's doable, though. I mean, it's not. I mean, for any of the guys that transferred in, Quinshawn, uh, uh, McLaughlin. The center. I, th- th- These those, guys could those all. To me, those to me are a lot easier spots to to transfer and go get a spot on another team. But quarterback, I just that's tall order. I tell you what, Notre Dame might need one. No joke. But uh, just because that dude's not healthy yet. But uh, so okay. So back to the uh, focus here. We're talking about quarterbacks in in the two deep. And let uh, so the transfer portal is all encompassing, always available, always open. You know, it's like Taco Bell. You might regret it after you go there. You might end up with some stuff you didn't want. Maybe you didn't order, but you're in it. You got to find your best way out. A lot of times that's the toilet. <laughs> Anyways, well. Uh, so, uh, Jeff, since you started off the uh, QB conversation, give me your two deep on the QBs. Uh, I mean, I, I don't uh, – what I, what I think right now, I, I'm going to say – I'm going to say Devin Brown. I'm going to say Devin Brown mm-hmm. won and, and Will, Will Howard at two. Okay. I mean, I, I think it's – I don't think they're anywhere close to making a decision on either one of them. Um as far as you know, ranking them, uh, I'm just going off of Devin Brown. I think just is still uh, still has a leg up as far as no, knowing comfortability and and familiarity. I I, yeah. just, I think he's just still, still is a step ahead. Mm-hmm. Okay, Sean, what do you think? Uh, how's how's your two deep look? It's looking good. Thanks. Uh... <laughs> You shined it up, did you? <laughs> Jeff stole my thunder there. I'm gonna, you know, I was a, I was a uh, Devin Brown uh, homer last year. I'm sticking with my guy. Um, I'll go Devin Brown, uh, one, power two. I don't know though. Like I like my uh, Lincoln Kineholes, mm. the dark horse. But yeah, I'm gonna go. I'll go with Devin one. Uh, I was third year in the program. Mm-hmm. Got some learning last year. Maybe settle down. I'm just doing that because he's a home, not homegrown from from Ohio, but uh, came up through our system. So I got a more of affinity to him. Um, but but he's got to earn it, and I'm happy if, if Will Howard beats him out. But uh, I go with Devin. Devin. Okay. Uh, I'm I'm going. Um... Who is a tough one? This is not who I want. This is who I think. I think Howard gets the start at QB1. Devin Brown behind him. Hmm. I think that's the way it goes. I actually um, think that's probably the most logical. Um, but, yeah, yeah, but yeah, logical. I'm, I'm being a little emotional. Well, that's fine, Sean. You can be emotional. You can you can cry on my shoulder. It's all good. Um, wouldn't be the first time, actually. 
So uh, I just, I, I really feel like I, I don't agree with a lot of shows and like 97.1, the fan out of Columbus where uh, Bo Bishop, he's kind of hard on for these quarterbacks um, and how we can't have five in the room. Guys, don't be a bit surprised if we have five quarterbacks going into fall camp. Don't be surprised, okay? I could say I, that. I, I apparently, well, some shows act like it, it is uh, against the rules or something. I don't know. It, it's kind of <laughs> silly. Go ahead, Jeff. I would be. It would, I would. No, I would be. You're right. You said we, should, we shouldn't be surprised. It would just because of the way we've been experiencing college football these days with the the capability of transferring and stuff. It would, I would kind of be surprised if all five stayed. I would. Now, I'm not going to, I'm not, that, but that doesn't make me worried or concerned about it. I don't, I won't view it as a negative. I, but I will be surprised if all five are there at the start of the season. I just, cause I just think, I just think one of them's going to see the writing on the wall of, I'm number five. I fuck this. Right. You know, I'll be surprised, but I won't be concerned that, you know, I won't be. But like, I think you take the two freshmen out of the equation. I think you take Julian Sand and Aaron Nolan out of the equation. They're going to sit no matter where they go. I mean, they yeah, they could go start at a shitty school. They're not going to go start at a fucking Bama, a Georgia, an Ohio State. You know what I'm saying? So right, if right. that's what you want to start as a freshman without knowing anything, you know, and basically. Uh, moving, restarting, learning a new offense after April. Good luck. I don't know how you're going to start by end of August because the season starts early this year. It's the last weekend of August. So um, I think you take the – for Ohio State's well, purposes – go ahead, John. Well, that's, that's, that's kind of what I'm thinking too is just um, I, I don't think they're all going to stay uh, through their playing careers at Ohio State at all, but – I wouldn't right. be surprised if they stayed this year, you know, let college football, let the season play out. You see where other teams are at with their quarterback situations. And now you spent the whole year learning under Ryan day and, and, you know, a pretty much a pro, uh, you know, a top notch organization like Ohio state. And then, mm -hmm. you know, opportunities present themselves at the end of the year. Then I think you make your move and then go participate in spring ball with another team or, or whatnot. But I, I, I could see them. I could see them all staying. Because, uh, like you said, that if, if they go after that, you know, maybe Howard could go somewhere and start, but no one else is. Um, right. Not at a program that's worth anything. So, right. yeah, I, I'd say, hey, yeah, let's stick it out through the year. And and the coaches probably even know, like, hey, yeah, the guy wants to stay here and train with us. And we know uh, next year or that, that, that Nolan or saying are gone. Yeah. I, I, I don't see a future where both those guys spend uh, four years at Ohio State. Right. And, yeah, so let with, without jumping too far ahead, let, let's uh, stick here in, in the 2024 season. There's a lot of conversations to be had about 2025, you know, uh, with with those quarterbacks and uh, Tavian St. Clair coming in, you know, five stars. So, We'll, we'll get to that at, at a later date, but for the 2024 two deep, let's focus on what we have. So I got Howard, Devin Brown, Jeff, you got Howard and Devin Brown, right? I got Devin Brown ahead of De uh, Howard right now. Okay. But yeah, same Sean, two. Yes, yes. Sean, you yeah, had who's starting? De Devin, Devin and Howard. Okay. See, that's the thing is right now, I you can't really argue – Either one is better. Uh, we haven't seen it. You know, we've right. only seen practice videos, you know, grainy Zabruder film <laughs> type stuff. Um, and and also you got you got to let the season or get here, you know. So then let's move over to running back. You got Trey, Quinshawn, you got uh, Dallin Hayden. I'm, I'm. I don't think these rumors about Dallin Hayden leaving are that far fetched. Um, then you got the two true freshmen. So theoretically, you could be stuck with 
just a four guy running back room, right? I mean, you got TC Caffey, the walk on, but come on, let's be serious here. Yeah, don't don't sleep on my boy TC Caffey. I know he, they, he called, they, they called you all last year for that shit, Joe. He crushed him. Well, I mean, I I, I get it with Dallin Hayden, but I also uh, in my mind, I'm like, well, um, aren't both Trey and Quinshawn gone next year? I mean, unless unless yeah. Hayden thinks I, that he's getting passed up by the younger guys, um, I I would, I mean, why you're in the driver's seat for next year? That's what I'm saying. He's got two more years of eligibility after this year because they he took that weird red shirt last year, you know. Yeah, that's that is weird that he would have two more years, but he's not one to spend two years. You know what I mean? He's he knows that the shelf life of those running backs, like they but he hasn't had to work. You're right, but he hasn't he has had to no work. Tread. He has no tread worn off his tires yet. But I don't know, you know, but you think though he just might be looking at look, I need I got one more year before I need I need to get and start working on this this career and you know, getting this money. So um the and obviously I don't think with, with what Trey and Jukins brought in NIL words wise I don't I can't imagine that Hayden has a real big you know pocketbook right now or portfolio you know what I mean I'm not because sure he needs it though two. his dad played in the NFL I tell him that <laughs> you know what I mean well, <laughs> he doesn't him. seem like a he needs I, it I don't I know guess. I don't I don't I, I don't know either I, I'm just saying I, I'm trying to put in his why you know what is what are the reason for the rumors that he's you know got, looking mm-hmm. to bounce out of here when the portal opens? I'm just trying to put put some some suggestions out there. And to me, it doesn't make sense either. I hope the guy he doesn't because I'm I'm a big fan of his and I'm looking forward to seeing him when he is the featured back. I think he could be he could yeah. be our next J.K. our next Zeke our you know our main featured back stud. Um, well, I, I just hope we're recruited over to with with James Peoples might be his threat, you know, that he's feeling after this, after this year, not this year, obviously, yeah. you know, he's third man in this year, which he will get carries. I mean, there's no doubt about it. He's going to get hundreds of snaps. I'm talking I, two, I, 300 snaps. I, yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to guess Trey, Trey does not, I'm, I'm guessing Trey Henderson, just a over under, I'm guessing he does not dress for two and a half games. Possibly, yeah. you know what I mean. Same with I, just, Quinchon. Maybe oh, they yeah, trade yeah, off. Just, you know, sure, sure. Some of these games have a slight, you know, the slight ding that, or deep thigh bruise mm-hmm. or something like that, or just a tweak, yeah. uh, a tweak in the ankle. I just uh, sit him. Just sit him. We got yeah. Dallin. We got the two freshmen because they're not. They, you know, maybe they're not going to care about burning burning the red shirts or, or at least on one of the freshmen. Um, and they're going to do have to factor in the relationship with Tony Alford. I think that's part of it too. Yeah, I because uh, Aaron Hayden was a big proponent of Tony Alford at Ohio State. Well, you think yeah. he could? You think if he bounces, he that uh, Michigan is a is an option? Then, like that, that's might a be legit contender. Yeah, a spot. Yeah. I think so. Yep. Uh, that see, I can't, I, I can't tell that, that. that. There's, an... that's a separate topic. Just talking yeah. about what we have this season in the running back room. You know, um, we'll we can take. We don't. We don't have to jump ahead and assume that Dallin Aiden's leaving. We can leave it as is with the five guys. Yeah, five guys, burgers and fries. Um, good shit right there. Good I, food. I, I can't. No. I'll tell you, have you had Culver's? Yeah, we got we got yeah, Culver's all over here now. How about those those the custards? Oh, mm-hmm. look the fuck out! Big man loving. Anyways, anyway, uh, so that's too deep yeah. on the burger stands. <laughs> <laughs> what's what's your too deep on uh, fast food, Jeff? <laughs> no. Uh, so in the running back room, uh, give me your too deep. I mean, I, I I could trade Quinchon. Trey, you know, Trey is the in one. That order, okay. Uh, yeah, I I, I think it, Trey's going to get the carries. The 
the amount he wants, I think. Um, and they're gonna, you know, they'll, they'll, start, they'll, they'll scale him back. It's, I, I think their carries at the end of the year could be, you know, if it's it, we're round numbers, if it's two hundred, then it's two hundred to two twenty or something like that. It might be. I think it's gonna be really, really close, almost a 50 50 uh, barring injuries. And if if both guys are all stay healthy, I think they're gonna get mm. as equal carries as possible. Okay. Yeah, I, I can't argue with that. What do you think, Sean? You got Trey and Quinn Sean backing him up? Yeah, of course. And I, you know, I it's probably I don't know how many how many snaps are in uh Buckeye football season. I'd probably go like three fifty for Trey, three hundred for uh Quinn Sean and uh, you know, then another hundred or whatever dispersed, probably mostly Hayden and maybe some other younger guys. But yeah, one A, one B type of situation yeah. I feel. Yeah, but in, you know yeah. injuries. If running the running back position, injuries will injuries will come. I, I know. know. I mean, you there's know, some years where we're where we're thin and nobody gets hurt, mm-hmm. and then other years we think we're stacked, and then no one's healthy. It's like what the, you know, it's like man, two months ago this room was deep as shit, and now we're scrambling. Yeah. Exactly. All right, uh, I'm going Saint Trey and Quinn Sean. Um, Trey might get the first carry of the season just because he's the uh, kind of incumbent, incumbent, you know, returning Buckeye, and Quinshawn's the new guy. I mean, that, that's about it. So, um, all right, let's go to wide receivers. So this is up in the air, like kind of this is a little bit of what we just talked about to start off the show. Wide receiver, Jeff, let's start with you. Um, let's start. Let's go um, with the slot first, and then your two outside guys. Um, I, I'm probably gonna say if they if they run that formation, I think we'll have. I think it'll be Ennis, Emeka, and Tate. Mm. Okay. Um. And then, then that could vary. Like the very next series, that could change, you know, completely. Um, so who's your back? Who's behind them? Okay, so uh, well, at the outside, I think we're. I would say that our backing up the slot. Yeah. I, I, if a mech is outside and Tate's outside, and so you have say Jeremiah backing up. Tate on the outside, or mm-hmm. I don't know how they want. It. I don't know where they're. Where they're yeah. all kind of cross training at all of them, at both but both of the outside. Jeremiah's positions, probably not so. ready to be a slot yet. No, uh, but I mean, I think if if Emeka starts outside, then Ennis is a slot, and I would say Emeka is the number two slot, or and 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 Smith would be his backup, be Emeka's backup at mm-hmm. you know outside. So. Um, it's almost like it's almost like not really even a two deep. It's just a we got these four, and they're gonna depending on formation <laughs> type thing, you know. Right, but I think you got to have a, another outside backup. Um, yeah, I, 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 I don't know. Um, is, is Bryson Rogers working more as a slot? I, I see. I mean, yeah. we haven't got even got a clear word yeah. as where he's working more. Yeah, he's more. Is of he slot. working more in slot? More he still he still hasn't put on a lot of weight. He's like you know, in seventy one seventy five. I and we haven't heard much much other talk about anybody any other outside receivers, aside from Mecca, Tate and Ballard. and Jeremiah, and I guess Ballard. But um, I hear more talk about Rogers than I do. I've heard yeah. nothing. We've heard nothing about Anthony or, or Grace. Right. I, Ballard would probably be my lean just because of his age. Yeah. You know, um, that's probably a safe bet. Mylon Graham, the other freshman, doesn't come in till summer, so you can't you can't bank on him. And who else? We, who else? Who, I mean, really, who else is there but aside from the it's names? A, we all it's kind of a thin in. room, honestly, right now. Yeah. So yeah, so Ballard probably is a, is a, is a backup at one of the outside slots. Mm-hmm. Sean, what do you got? Basically the same, but just a little bit different. Actually, uh, <laughs> I think it'll be a book in the slot. 
Um, you know, go with your guy that knows what he's doing out there. Um, I think Abuka in the slot, and then Tate and Jeremiah Smith on the outside. Oh. Giving the kid the start. Um, and then All I right. think the first guy in, I, I think the backups for the, the outside will be Emeka. And I think the backup for the inside will be Ennis. Mm -hmm. So kind of like Jeff said, I think it's going to be those four kind of m moving around a lot, really depending on what Emeka is doing. When Emeka so goes of... outside, Brandis, when Emeka goes outside, Brand, right. you know, Ennis comes in. When he's inside, Jeremiah Smith's in there. That's so kind of a five-man rotation. Five-man rotation between four men. But you got Ballard in there. Uh, we'll see. Occasion. I mean, I was going to say Ballard, but you guys fucking shit all over Ballard when I brought <laughs> his name up earlier. It's like, he's out of the top yeah. five. So I, I, I think um, the flexibility of the flexibility I, of Emeka makes him – you're right, John. You're right. Emeka's – one at he's the one at the one position, and he's in the two at the other position. So yeah, kind of like we said, it's four guys that are going to take okay. up five spots. Yeah, all right. <clears throat> four man rotation sounds good to me. Um, Heartline doesn't like to rotate a lot of dudes, anyways. He never has. So yeah, I I see it as being. Um, I got Ballard at the outside. I think that's where he's going. to – I mean, uh, a Mecca at the outside. Uh, I think that's where he's going to spend the bulk of his time. He will obviously move around because he can. He has that flexibility. And um, I think you're going to see Ennis at the slot, assuming Ballard's outside, obviously. And then Tate. Tate is your guy. Tate has locked down a starting job. He should probably never come off the field, honestly, uh, unless he's tired. So um, I got – and Mecca Ennis Tate, I think that's your best three. And then Jeremiah Smith is your fourth man in wherever he can find a spot. I, I don't think he'll ever play the slot, so he'll just rotate into those uh, outside positions. That's all, I got. all right, uh, let's talk <clears throat> O-line. Then we'll get to tight ends. Oh, we didn't do a draft. We need to do our draft again. We'll do an offensive draft if you're not too offended uh, when we get through this uh, lineup. Uh, O-line, let's start with O-line. Jeff, let's circle back to you, let you kick this off with your uh, starting O-line. Let's go left to right along the O-line. Uh, uh, Jeff Simmons is, is is in I think, in, in blood, in, in whatever solid – Inc., whatever, uh, at left tackle, uh, Diamond Jackson, at left guard. Um, I do think um, McLaughlin is our center. Um, right guard, I look like Montgomery. And then you got Fryer at right tackle. Um, coming back through to the, the number twos at left tackle. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't even know who they're – I've, I've not heard anything of where they're, who they're looking – or working at left tackle behind him. Um, I haven't heard any talk about Mikulski or Zen Mikowski inside interior. So I, you know, is it, is it Shibola's working over at right tackle? Um, Hensman's probably our backup center right now in interior guards. I don't know. Austin Saravold say left guard. Um, I, I, I'm not, I mean, you know, Viamahi is what our backup right guard, I guess. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, that's I, you know, I'd say, yeah, Mikulski, Saravold, Hinsman going across left to right, um, Viamahi, and then Chibola. Okay. All right, Henry, what do you got on your O line? <clears throat> Um, I don't like the O line at all. I'm not in front of my computer, so some of these names are missing. I'll kind of defer. I'll, I'll kind of defer to Jeff's. I think that's logical from oh, that's from terrible. Home, from that's terrible me, advice. but 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 I'm I'm high on Donovan, and I'm looking forward to see this Montgomery play. Um, other than that, I'm not that excited um, for any of them. 
I, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen much from any of them. Um, I don't, you know, it, it, it sounds like all the talk that we do and stuff is kind of what Jeff said for the starters. That's kind of the, the, the thought process. But again, I want to see Montgomery and, and Jackson. I want to see a resurgence. You know, this guy's number one guard out of Texas coming out of high school. Um, had a good year when Paris Johnson was next to him and then kind of fell off last year. So. Okay. I, I get your point. He was kind of surrounded by uh, mediocrity last year to his left and to his right stuck in the middle with you. Um, so yeah, Enoch is, is definitely not an answer. Although he will probably get, I hope he doesn't get the swing man, like six man in kind of treatment, but he might just because it's his last season. He's been around. Last year, he just had 100 snaps. 57 of those were in the bowl game where, you know, the entire line was railroaded. Um, I'm going. I'm going. Basically, you know, this is pretty much in, in stone, right? I mean, there's not a lot of wiggle room here for the old line. I'm going Simmons, Donovan, uh, the fine Irishman, McLaughlin, um, Luke Montgomery, pride of the four one nine, and Fryer looks like he's going to hold down that right tackle job. I wish they would open up that competition a little bit more. Seems like they're not. Um, so, maybe nobody's nobody's maybe nobody's causing them to have that thought, you know. Maybe maybe Sim, maybe prior right. Well, it, yeah, it's scary. That's I'm, we're all kind of uncomfortable with how that the O line depth look. But that could it's be very it. uncomfortable because I mean, Fryer allowed five sacks last year, thirteen pressures. I mean, and he he was bad in the big games. Pass blocking and run blocking. So I went through this on Friday. We talked about it. I got the grades right in front of me, too. I don't want to go game by game, but he's giving up fucking sacks to fucking Minnesota, Wisconsin, Penn State, Purdue, Maryland. Come the fuck on, man. <sighs> Three pressures against Wisconsin. So... Right tackle has to be better. Well, it didn't, but didn't help that your quarterback could stare down at his feet half the time when something's coming either. I, I'm not going to deny that. I'm not going to deny that the quarterback was part of the problem. He was uh, very interested in throwing the ball into the dirt very often instead of taking a fucking hit. But anyway, so my starters nailed it. Um, then the two deep is a little dicey at this point. Offensive line obviously is going to be in spring. So, but I think I got George Fitzpatrick backing up Josh Simmons at left tackle. Then okay. be, behind Donovan Jackson. Jesus Christ. I mean, I know Sarah Bold's working at guard. Uh, I Sarah, Bold, that. Sarah Bold's in the two deep, I would say, at left guard. So, your your backup center is going to be Hinsman, and he admitted this week that he did not belong on the field last year. He was not ready. Um, we just had no other options, obviously. So we'll right guard, early, yeah, yeah, right guard behind Montgomery. That's where I struggle, man. I mean, you can't put a freshman in there. Maybe Shibola. I guess it has to be Shibola, but then I don't know who's behind Fryer at, at right tackle. I, I got nothing there. I got nothing. I think they'll do. I think they'll do like they always do. Like you said, Joe, who's that sixth man? It's like, okay, if something happens to somebody, you move right. over, and then we plug this guy in here. Type I guess it has to be the Mahi. Right. Take mean, Shibola as the swing man, maybe. <laughs> I hope so. Fuck. I do not want to see Mamahi on the field ever again. So, uh, all right. Let's I go. Do. I love to... Hawaiians. Oh, I love Hawaiians too. I'm a huge, you know me, huge Polynesian guy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let's not get into that. Uh, tight end. 
So let's talk tight end because uh, we could very well start off with a 12 personnel first snap of the year. So uh, Jeff, let you, let's let you kick that off. Uh, starting tight end. I, I think, I think, well, if we're, if, say if we come out in regular 11 personnel, I think starting tight ends, G Scott. Um, and if, you know, you come out in 12 personnel with your two tight ends, I think you see G Scott and, uh, what's his name? Uh, the transfer. Yeah. Casmer. Casmer. Yeah. Casmer. Yeah. Yeah, that's logical. I, 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 but John, I think Jelani Thurman's going to get, I think the, the snaps between the two and the three tight ends is probably going to be about the same as like our, our, our starting running backs. So I think you, I think we will see a lot of Jelani Thurman. Um, okay. But, you know, they, they different, you know, that tight end, that tight end position's, uh, a little more difficult to to really diagnose because they you know different skill sets for different you know they you know more of a pass blocking more of a run blocking more of a um you know flex the flex the tight end out work the seam I think each I think that depending on what they're trying to do could will determine which of those tight ends I think each of them have you know uh, higher traits at different skills than others Does that makes sense. Yeah, so, I mean, I I think, uh, and it's hard. It's really hard to say because we're not we're not going to get really much of a, a feel for that really right up until the season starts. Right. Um, and, and when I start game planning for that week one game, who's the for the the game plan? Who's the best option for that particular game plan? That, that mm -hmm. starting tight end might change. You know, there might be three or four different tight ends that start games. You know. Yeah. Um, depending on what they're what they're trying to do offensively. Right. I would say uh against Akron, Western Michigan, <laughs> and Marshall, does it matter? <laughs> no, no, it obviously no, it doesn't. I mean in the grand scheme, no, it none of, none of that matters. But they're you know, they're they're gonna look at just according to the defense and what you know, the matchups and that kind of stuff. They, even though it is a work all of our all of our guys are severely outmatching, you know, the counterparts on right. those defenses. So, well, I, let me just lay it out quickly. We got 600 snaps from Cade Stover last year, over 600, with one DNP in the middle of there that season. So that's what we got to replace, right? We got to replace it with G Scott. He only had 350 snaps last year, so almost half. Then you got. Royer's gone. Jelani only had 24 last year. Is he going to step up? Is is he ready? Is he developed? And then where does Kaz Merrick fit in? Is he ready for Big Ten football, not Mac football? You know, that's the question. And well, we're, again, we got more production. We got production. We got to fulfill. Not that not that the next guy has to be the third leading tight end in, in school history. I'm not saying that, but there is production to be had that we got to make up for. I would, uh, I'm going to go, if Chip Kelly's calling the offense, I'm going to flip what Jeff said. I'm going to go Kazmarek um, <laughs> as, as the starter uh, for, I feel like he's probably going to be a better run blocker than Guy Scott. I think if it's if it's more of a Ryan Day lean, I think it'd be Gee Scott. But I, I would so I'm gonna go Kazmarek Gee Scott one two. I would absolutely love to see Jelani Thurman just take over that room and become the guy. Yeah, right. and we don't know what we have from Bennett Christian. He was able to practice all year last year, but he was on scout team, so he never really was immersed in the offense, right? Uh, so he was a 2022 guy, been on campus for two years now, but last year was not involved in practice at all in a meaningful way. You know, when you're on scout team, you're running the scout team plays for the opposing offense. You're not running, you know, the Ohio State offense. So uh, that would be a concern. And then the two freshmen coming in, Max LeBlanc, and Demarion Witten aren't going to be here until summer, so you can't you can't even 
uh, bank on them for anything. For me, uh, I'm going <clears throat> G and Kazmarek and Thurman. That's my three. And then uh, Bennett Christian has to be your fourth. They're pretty thin. They only got six guys in the room, and two of them aren't here yet. So it's pretty fucking thin. You might see the Buckeyes dip into the portal again after spring. Because I, I don't know. If I don't know. Are... I mean, why do you say that? How many played last year? You just said that Jelani only got 25 snaps last year. It was Gee Scott and Stover. Um, three Stover guys basically dominated. got snaps. Yeah, Still three guys like got snapped last year. Yeah, but I think uh, between the between the three, and certainly uh, if if Hensman or somebody gets some snaps, I I don't feel it's that thin. I mean, I I, I felt worse about it last year. If uh, Stover would have went down, then would have been thin. No, that happened. He did miss a game, uh, but I I think there's going to be a huge. Um, changing uh, of, of personnel in this uh, spring portal window, not just at Ohio State, but across the country. This this is going to be massive. So there's going to be dudes in there. That's why it's not a bad idea. If you don't know what you have with Bennett Christian, maybe you go dip in, grab a dude, you know, that especially a, you need a blocking tight end, right? I mean, we got – but Jelani Thurman is obviously – he's used as a, a a big wide receiver in, in high school, you know. Um, G. Scott, another big-time wide receiver. So we need more of those blocking types. So, all right. Uh, so that, that knocks out the, uh, the offense too deep. I'm going to dip into the chat here and see what's going on. Hopefully, I don't get anything on me. If we got time at the end, we'll do a quick three-round draft of the offensive players again um, because I think things have changed a bit as spring has evolved. So let's start at the top. Billy Tuesday says, go box. Damn you, Billy. Go box to you. Odysseus says, OH with a bunch of nuts. Spring game less than a week away. That's right. Billy says, been a week without a boom. Joe's slacking. Has it been a whole week? Really? I'm in. I'll uh, dial up Pantone. Give me a minute. Uh, maybe I can get him on speaker. Who knows? Uh, Odysseus says, JJ, maybe wide receiver one. Ooh, what do you guys think of that? The crowd is is liking JJ as a starter. I'm telling you. Okay. All right. Um, Billy says, "Who was defending him on that catch?" I I I couldn't tell. I watched it completely through. I could not see a number on that white jersey. It looked like IGB, but I I cannot be sure about that. Um. Odysseus says JJ is always open even when blanketed. Yes, that was a aggressive coverage. Um, we talked about that. Odysseus says JJ at X, uh, Mecca at the slot, Tate at the Y. Well, the Y? Oh, yeah. I think you mean the Z. Uh, Innis, fourth wide receiver. That That's kind of where we landed with that rotation of four, right? Right, guys. Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. You're right. Yeah, too. yeah. Uh, Billy says we're playing Akron Week One. Should give us a lot of opportunity to mix in a lot of wide receivers. Exactly. It is just going to be a second spring game in the fall. Odysseus um, says no reason not to play three deep versus Akron. My thoughts exactly. Ryan Day has to do a much better job of managing these blowouts against garbage teams, getting young guys in there so they get some experience. Not to burn their red shirt. It's one game, you know. And, again, the playoffs and any postseason games do not count against the red shirt. So, theoretically, a guy could play 
four of the regular regular season 12 games so they could play a third of the season and then play all of the postseason and still preserve the red shirt. Um, but yeah, uh, Billy says no, there's no limit on transferring. That's true. Oh, Odysseus. Oh, the, the thing, the difference though is if you're a grad transfer, you can pop into portal at any time and pop out. Pop in, pop out, Jeff. Um, Odysseus says, will scum players hit the spring portal when they realize the orgy can't throw a forward pass? <laughs> Sean, what do you think of that? <laughs> you think uh, wide receivers will hit the portal out of, out of Ann Arbor? Can't hear you guys. I, I missed that, Joe. Oh, uh, the question was, uh, will scum players hit the spring portal when they realize Orgy can't throw a forward pass? I don't think they're thinking Orgy's going to be the quarterback up there. Really? Yeah. It's, the, the transfer guy? Uh, I, I forget the name that they're bandying about. I don't know if it's a transfer guy that they brought in a year or two ago. Um, but to, to me, that was – um, and I haven't, I haven't looked at their stuff in a little bit, but a couple of weeks ago, um, and maybe it was the transfer guy, it, was, it seemed like their fan base at least was, Orgy wasn't the guy. Hmm. Okay. That's interesting. So, okay. Uh, continuing here, I, I, I do think you will see some cheater – players enter the portal offensive guys I don't care about unless it's Donovan Edwards but defensive guys is where I have my focus um Odysseus says and Tuttle isn't much better oh yeah they got Jack Tuttle still it's like for his seventh year um Billy says uh they're bringing about they're bragging that orgy is built like an edge <laughs> There you go. Uh, Todd Doyle, what's up, Todd? Good to see you. He says, Will Howard was at the game versus Missouri. I'm guessing if Deva doesn't – what? He was at the game. He was not suited up. I'm guessing if Devin doesn't go down and got comfortable, he won the game. Will wouldn't have came – Devin struggled, and Will thought it would be an easy job. Hmm. Well, that's very confusing. Jeff, do you, do you have any uh, info on Will Howard being at the Cotton Bowl? Against Missouri? Jeff, hello? Does anybody see I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Yo. Hello. Do you have any intel on Will Howard being at the uh, Cotton Bowl against Missouri? No. Yeah. <laughs> Me neither. Okay. Uh, Makes Billy sense. Said, I, mean, I don't. Think, I don't think Will Howard came here to be backup. I thought you know no. he saw an opportunity and said, "Hey, you know sure. what? I, I can. I can flat out compete for this job." Mm -hmm. and, and what was the, what's the NIL deal we gave him? I mean, how much money is he getting paid, and what if? Is that contingent upon him starting? I mean, if Devin Brown has improved enough and performs better, they will start Devin Brown. They're not going to start Will Howard just because the NIO, you know, is has, has given him or has promised him one one million or seven hundred fifty thousand, whatever the number might right? be. <laughs> Those commas. <laughs> you should you get a tequila. Those commas. So, anyways, maybe right. Will Howard was at the game. He definitely wasn't suited up. He wasn't on our sideline. No, or he wasn't. No. He wasn't. So, like a yeah. So anyway, he, he could have watched it on TV, honestly, and seen that it was a shit show, um, just like me. It was obvious to anywhere you. See. I mean, you, you could listen to yeah. it on the radio and know that you could, right. you, you could help this the is, team. Yeah. 
Uh, Billy says, the way our O-line played that day, I don't think Joe Montana could have done well. No. No, I don't think so either, Billy. Well, we don't need to get back into this and what everybody's what everybody's talks and thoughts on that game. No, we're not. We're not. Uh, Odysseus says, I would bet we have five for the season. Right there, I'm with you guys. I'm, I am not on board with pushing people out of this quarterback room. No, you know? I'm definitely not. Definitely not. I don't think I, – I just – I would – my thought was if we lose, if we go – if we start season with three of them or four of them, we're not – we don't push one out, but one kind of sees the writing on the wall. And I I didn't put it past Aaron Nolan being the fifth. You know, with, with, with Julian Sane coming in, maybe he thought, well, now I am the fifth. And the guy that's right in front of me is in the same grade or same eligibility as me. That would be that was my first thought of, of, you know, be me being kind of the odd man out, low man on like, the totem pole, low man on the totem pole, however you want to put it. Yeah. Um, you know, would saying just was saying because, would before saying comes on, I think Aaron Nolan is totally expected. Uh, you know, we got at least two. There's gonna be at least two of these guys, or you know, even three. I'm. Yeah, I'm gonna be a freshman. I'm gonna come in and learn and 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 just kind of learn the offense, knowing the two of them are leaving for sure after the right. season. Um, but I just think maybe with saying with saying coming on, he may, he made maybe he maybe his feelings were a little hurt. You know that that uh, Ryan Day decided to to take Julian saying. Um, you know how like those guys are. Some of those guys that don't come in when you got mm. you know, but you don't know, get two front line guys at one position. Right. Because they know they're the same age, so uh, we don't know. I mean, but we don't know what Aaron Nolan's where his head's at, where what you know what he's thinking. Um, I you hear a lot of talk about Julian saying though. You know, we've seen some mm -hmm. of the videos of some of the passes he's made, but you don't. I haven't seen those videos from Aaron Nolan. Not to say no, that, that we haven't, the we haven't seen all, much but, at all. And there's probably a reason for that. Uh, there were rumors of Aaron Nolan being late to meetings or whatever so who knows if that's true but uh we have not heard anything negative about right. julian saying other than he's been very accurate in uh in practice and again you know they're rolling these quarterbacks through each rotation they're not so like yeah. saying is not throwing to the threes he is occasionally throwing to the ones and the twos and and vice versa devin brown and uh, Will Howard are throwing – they're they're throwing to different groups. You know, they're throwing to the twos, the threes, the ones, all of them. So they keep these rotations going so that it doesn't matter who you're throwing to. You know, Obviously, those three plus Lincoln Keenholes, you know, he's in that rotation as well. Air Nolan right now is probably not getting the same number of reps as everybody else. So who knows? Yeah. Um, so let's continue with the chat here as we wind it down. Uh, Billy says we'll lose Air or Julian after spring. Okay. So he's taken a uh, opposing stance there to Odysseus. Odysseus said we'll have five uh, after spring. Billy says no, we're losing Air or Julian. I mean, the, the, I mean, I guess. If if Howard gets the spot, Devin Brown still has another year. And if he's clear two. cut number two, and these guys are going to have to sit two years, I think you know you, you'd have a credible argument that one or those guys can start thinking about bouncing. Yeah, Devin Brown has two more years after this season. He redshirted in twenty twenty two. So Devin Brown has. No reason to leave. You know, I mean, if you, unless, like we talked about earlier, unless you're a freshman that thinks you should be starting right now between Nolan and Sain, or even Keenholes for that matter, you think you should be starting at a top 10 school and there's a job for you available to start, then you should probably jump. But I don't think that exists. You know, and we haven't talked about it. keynotes. Does, does keynotes think, well, Will Howard will be gone, but 
and Devin Brown's got two more years, mm-hmm. and Julian Sand might be moving past him. And there's still another guy, say, if if, if Nolan is staying, you know. Well, it's going to be – it has to be team, another please. quarterback competition next year, right? Sure. Between Devin, Lincoln, and the freshman, uh, Air and Julian, right? Yeah. And then you got TSC coming in, true freshman, not not a, not in the equation at all. How, so, how would it look, though? I mean, how, how crazy would it be to have – Starting starting two consecutive seasons with five five, you know, um, five quarterbacks both. That would actually say that would be a lot wild. about about the room and the yeah, and about the position coaching, the development. At Ohio State. Right. Yeah, that mm-hmm. would say a lot. So, uh, yeah. Let, let me get back to the chat here. So. Um, Let's see, Billy. So Billy says we lose Air or Julian. I'm I'm not sold, Billy. I'm sorry, I can't get with you there. Um, Howard uh, Dissy says Howard gives us the best dual threat ability. Okay, I, I'm there. I think Devin also does. He can't. He can't. Uh, can't forget about Devin Brown. Um, they they put together a a red zone package for him last year for a reason, where he could use his legs. Uh, Billy says Devin has yet to prove he can stay healthy. Okay, we we we've talked about that since uh, the, since the bowl game, really, and mm-hmm. a lot of Buckeye fans have jumped off the Devin Brown bandwagon, you know, because of those injuries. So I understand it. I just I'm not. I am not. Canceling Devin Brown, I am not pushing him out the room. So, no. Uh, Billy says, "Aren't we getting an, a running back from UMass?" Oh, that's right, Billy. Thank you for the reminder. Yes, we do have a running back, Crystal Bald, in the portal. God, sandwich. Uh, from UMass, I completely forgot about that because. He's a running back from UMass, and and, uh, and, that, and that, but Joe, that could be also be contingent on if Hayden stays or not. Exactly, one hundred percent. Yes, right. I'm pretty sure that that's probably in place. You know, hey, we want to if we lose Hayden. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so I was just gonna look that up real quick. Yeah, want to get that dude's name accurate. Because uh, that was like a week ago, almost. Yeah, Kron Lynch Adams. That's right. He's from Warren, I believe. Yeah, Warren yeah. T. Harding High School, uh, class of 2021, 5'10", 205. When he came out, he was a three star. And eight seven oh seven, very lowly ranked, uh, but he did have a good season last year. I think he ran for over a thousand yards. Um, so, yeah, let's see if he actually comes in. I think it it really is is kind of a uh, it shows you that the uh, the Buckeyes assume down Hayden's entering for right. They wanted a fifth guy in there. So, yeah. Thank you, Billy. You should be a contributor to the show, although it pays nothing. Um, So, uh, great point. Odysseus says, Trey first, back, Judkins, 1B, Hayden, third back with increased carries, people's fourth. Okay, yeah. If if uh, Hayden's still around, sounds great. <laughs> um, let's see. Odysseus says, "Why would we? Why would he follow Alfred to sit behind Edwards and their backup?" That's a fair point, Odysseus. Um, why his point is why would Dallin Hayden transfer to Michigan? You know, to sit behind Edwards. Who's Sean? Do you know who uh, Michigan's? I don't know their running back room. 
Uh, they yeah, they love their that, backup they, Edwards. They love him. Yeah, he he played Same a lot guy. last season. I forget his name, but he's he's solid. Play they got no, 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 he's gone. Chris Perry. No. My heart. <laughs> no, they got they got a dude they like a lot that actually played. Um, I don't know if Edwards was um, hurt from oh, part Jordan of the Marshall. season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From Cincy, yeah. Ben Hall. Who's Ben Hall? No, Jordan Marshall's the new. Uh, he's the freshman, right? Yeah, he's a true freshman. No, they got a dude in there that's not that played last year. Benjamin um, Hall, and you got Mullings. Mullings. Kalel Mullings. Mullings. Mullings is he's a short guy. yardage guy, though. Yeah, he'll probably take over the Blake Corum role and have Edwards continue doing what he does. Okay. Cole Cabana, let's not leave him on the conversation, please. That name. I might have to change mine to that. Cole Cabana. Right yeah, we should have played him. We should have played him in the playoffs, but yeah. he knocked us out of that stuff. That kid's fast. I don't know. He's a little McCaffrey type. Great white height. Can he, he can bring a Mai Tai in record time. That's right. <laughs> nice. All right. Uh, uh, Steven a boy. <laughs> <laughs> uh Odysseus says it's not like Alfred played him much. Talking about uh, uh, um, Hayden, I assume. Uh, Steven has the eyeballs. Steven Cherry's in here. Uh, Steven, no oh, oh, great crazy prediction. Oh, Steven did ask on Friday, and this is a conversation we, we should have at some point, not necessarily now, but uh, Steven asked me on Friday if, if uh, we're going to any games this year. So we may need to discuss since it's April. Yeah, let's uh let's talk to the sponsors. Let's see what's happening. Do you want me to talk to them? Yeah, we'll get on it. We'll get on. We can get on a, on a business call. Do what's up. Okay. All right. We'll do that. So we'll get back to you, Stephen. I'm thinking the uh, less expensive games are probably a good idea. <laughs> right. <laughs> the non cons, the garbage teams. Uh, the 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 cheaters coming to town in November is going to be a pricey ticket. Not to mention hotels and flights. For and some. unless unless you guys know, you know, yeah, you don't have to worry about it. But um, unless you guys know of a uh, somebody that's willing to uh, pay for the Buckeye Cast team, this is coming out of our pockets. <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> right, right. Unless, unless, uh, unless somebody uh, like DraftKings starts to go fund me. Let's, get a, let's get a GoFundMe going. Go, go fund, <laughs> go fund me and the cast. <laughs> go fund us. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Stevens stirring the pot here. He says Jeremiah Smith is wide receiver one. So he's not even. Let's he's go. He's not even WR three or four. WR1, he says, y'all get too caught up in seniority. Put best players on the field. And he throws his hands up in the hey. emoji style. I like where his head face is at. Yeah. I'm not sure it's realistic, but it's not about seniority. It's not about that at all. I think I don't think you can take a mecca off the field ever. But I also think I, I, I think that's what this Jeremiah Smith snaps. could be too. I mean, with that size, if he can get out there and block on the end as well, um, then wh why is he ever coming off? He should be a force in the pass game, in the run game, and everything. I feel like Emeka is a made man. He's had a thousand yard season. I, oh, I agree. Emeka is, you know, ten touchdown season. So. I don't think you take him off the field. If you want to bicker over Tate versus Jeremiah, I'll listen to that argument for sure. But I I will not uh, just leave a Mecca on. It's not because of seniority either. He's, he's done it. He's done it in big-time college football. 
Jeremiah has not yet. But if you want to go Tate versus Jeremiah, sure, I'll listen to that. I do want to see Ennis on the field too, though, while we're, you know, talking about it. Odysseus says, O-line, Simmons, Jackson, McLaughlin, Montgomery, Fryer, Tegra, six man in. I like that. Yeah, I like Tegra. That's kind of like that. That, that. That would be if if that's the, if there is a six man just swing guy. That's I, I'll go with that too. Yeah. Yep. Right. Oh shit! Sorry, you Um Billy uh, retracted a, a message for some reason. Uh, Odysseus says Bamahi is playing Matador in the Cotton Bowl. You are correct. Um, <laughs> without the red <Yes>. cape. <laughs> <laughs> Odysseus says, I think Kazmarek and G start with Thurman getting plenty of reps. I agree with that. Billy I'll says, bet. I said we will lose Air or Julian next spring. Okay. I'm sorry, Billy. I didn't mean to uh, misrepresent you. So next which, spring. Which, which, which could be very, that could be very, very likely. Yeah. Yes. That makes sense, Billy. A lot more sense. Um, Let's see. Finishing up here, Odysseus says, Saiyan and JJ about to dominate Big Ten defenses in 25 and 26. That's a, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, when does Tavia St. Clair enter into this equation, though? That's my question. He's a five star. 2025. Uh, Steven says, Devin Brown, QB3 at best. Oh, my God. That is a kick in your DB nads. You guys got thoughts on that? QB3? For realsies? Uh, it's not out of the know. question. <laughs> it's, I mean, from, from what you hear, you think it kind of is like he's going to be one or two. But, um, again, I, I don't know where kind holes is. I don't, I don't think the young guys can – overtake him at this point but kind holes i don't know what are we hearing on kind holes south dakota stud yeah still hasn't been on campus for a year so i'm not sure he has a full grasp of the offense i would i would give him some time to uh still continue to get into it. I mean, his, his body's developed. He's, he's looked like he's put on some muscle and some weight. That's good. He needed it. Uh, so, but he still needs to, to get comfortable with the offense. So I cannot put him above Devin Brown though, in the pecking order. I can't put Julian saying above, above him. I can't put Aaron Nolan above him. Again, this is, Part of the fan base that I was talking about earlier that completely jumped off the band. Like, I think I was talking to my dad today out by the pool. We were talking about uh, uh -huh. Devin Brown. And I, I said, I am shocked at how the fan base just completely jumped off the bandwagon right after the Cotton Bowl because he got hurt. It's every member, everybody would. Before the season started, it was Kyle versus Devin. It was almost a 50-50 split. And whoever won that, I think, that, that competition, everybody was going to go the other direction just to, you know, be counter, you know, counter culture kind of. So Devin had a ton of support from Buckeye Nation till he got hurt in that Cotton Bowl. People are like, oh, no. Injury prone. That's what I kept hearing. Injury prone. Can't stay healthy. So that's just it. I'm not targeting Steven. I'm I'm saying that I've heard that a lot from, from people. So uh Odysseus says I think UMass guy just wants to be a buckeye and not coming to be a top three key top three back. I, I agree with the Odysseus. He it's a depth beast. Depth strictly. A chip trainer, you might say. Uh, Odysseus says Chip wants wide receivers who can block for his running game. So if JJ can block, he'll be on the field a lot. Yeah, but our wide receivers <laughs> haven't blocked great in the last few years. I don't know. 
Exactly. That's why there's a big opening here. <laughs> so he needs to fill that blocking. Yeah, area. I think so. And and with that build, the guys yeah. made for it. Okay. Yeah, we get, we got to wrap it up here, but I, I will get through these last couple of messages uh, in the chat. Uh, Steven says nothing against Devin Brown, but it's natty or bust season. You think? Brown is a natty type of QB. Legit question. I think the QB this year does not have to be great. He does not have to be outstanding. He doesn't have to be a, a Justin Fields. You know, I think he has to be good. We can't have a, a Kyle McCord out there, you know, taking 20 yard drops and and throwing. <laughs> Jesus Christ, don't get me started. Throwing, you know, uh, terrible balls, missing guys, throwing off his back foot, you know, the penalties. So that's that's how I feel about it. But I hear you, Steve, and I understand it's not a personal thing against Devin Brown, and it's always natty or bust, right? You guys, You guys feel any differently? I, I don't know if it's no. always natty or bust, um, mm -hmm. but usually, um, usually the talent's there. This year, it's certainly to me natty or bust. But there's, there's also a big question mark on that O line. I'm, I'm not real worried about the quarterback play because I, like you said, Joe, I don't think it needs to be all American uh, for us to win it all. It's just got to be good enough. Yeah. Right. I think it has to be better than Kyle McCord was last year, but it does not the, have to but, be. But the line, had, the line also has better than it was last of year. Of course. Of course. That's part of it. But yeah. to, the, to the specific point here about Devin Brown, I think he can get us to a national championship. Yeah. Yes. He's got the arm I, talent. Yes. He's got the wheels. Uh, it's, it's just about can he – make the offense function at a high level, you know, a, a good enough level. Again, I think this is going to be a heavy run season, you know. I think we're going to rely on the run a lot, both from the QBs and the running backs. So uh, I'm not just trying to say we're going to just turn around and hand it off every down like Michigan. So I think Devin Brown can get us there. Yeah, you so. you really can't do that like like the Michigan plan because then your your Jeremiah Smiths and your Tates and your and says stop coming to Ohio State if that's how you run it. Exactly. Offense. Yeah. Right. Right. So uh, to wrap it up here, Billy says I think we're going to have to trust Day with QB who gives us our best chances. <clears throat> Fair point, Billy. I agree too. Um, I got to say that if he brought in Devin Brown, it's for a reason, you know. So I don't think, I don't think Devin Brown's just on the team for, you know, shits and giggles. Uh, see, I, I, I feel, I feel more about the, what you just said, like how, Howard, he didn't bring in Howard for shits and giggles. Oh um, yeah. Yeah. Brown, what Brown was on the team, you know, recruited him. Third yeah. year, um, but Howard he didn't bring in, um, and he didn't come here because he thought, hey, you know, I'm going to be behind these four and five star quarterbacks. Right. Yeah, I get it, but it's a still a it's still a competition. You can't just Ryan Ryan Day is never going to guarantee a job to a transfer quarterback coming in. I don't care how much NIL money he got. No, correct. Trace I, commas, whatever. Uh, un, unless, unless your whole room folded, and you've got yeah. nobody, and, and you got to. Like, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're talking yeah. one scholarship quarterback, one one true freshman quarterback, or a, a red. That was freshman. Justin Fields' year. Yeah. You know, right. Exactly. But, uh, right. Which right, was right. basically a guaranteed start. Yeah. That that's not going to happen again. I don't think uh, under Ryan Day. And, so. and, and also, Joe, think you know. I would say Justin Fields um, 
pedigree was on a much higher level than a, than a Will Howard. Didn't have the experience, and, but he was the number two Brown. quarterback in the country. And uh, you know, I mean, it, yeah, yeah. So I mean, but back to the national title talk. Our offensive line has to play at a much higher clip than last year's versus our right. quarterback playing at a much higher clip than last year's. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. The old line. Yeah, the old line. Steven mentions line that here in the chat. And we've all, I mean, I think every Buckeye fan has said that. I mean, uh, that's that's not a, a shocker or, or breaking new ground, really. Uh, Steven says here to finish up, I think running the rock more under Kelly's scheme will help the offensive line progress and toughen up. Yes. The quality yes. of the O-line uh, play in running and pass blocking has to step up there's no doubt about it yeah. that's it i mean uh think about that you think about you know mccord that last pass against michigan as he got his arm hit well if that old line is playing better than last year we could take mccord's exact performance and maybe that play right there with him not getting hit as he's throwing yeah. changes our whole season right? right i mean sure so so I, i'll take the improvement over the old line and the same quarterback play over improved quarterback and same old lines. Yeah. All right. All right. I think we nailed it. Uh, appreciate everybody popping in. Don't forget to hit the like button on your way out the door. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. And, uh, hey, we appreciate you guys being here. Don't forget to hit the Buckeyecast.com. Check out the video vault. you got a free trial. You can pop in there. No payment required, no credit card, nothing. You can pop in there and give give it a whirl for three days. See if you like it. Stick around. I'm uploading new videos all the time. Your Buckeye Legends, um, condensed games. I've got multiple seasons of pen, pos, uh, <laughs> almost said possessed. Uh, condensed games. It's been a long day. I had to drive like five hours today. So, uh Anyways, we appreciate everybody being here. Check out the Buckeye Cast. Hey, don't forget the gear is on sale there too. What's that? Five hours drunk. <laughs> yeah. The last two and a half were, went fast. What, <laughs> how many is a handful of drinks? <laughs> anyway, uh, appreciate everybody being here. We will talk to you later. Go Bucks. Peace. Hey,